What's up guys, Oscar Gomez here from Master Automotive Training. So we're back again. New series today, we're gonna get started with automotive diagnostics. So how many of you guys have ever been caught where the car comes in and you have an issue where it's either a misfire, you don't know if it's mechanical or not? Take the guesswork out of it. What we're gonna show you guys today is how to do a compression test and how to do the three stages and three different types of compression testing. If that doesn't work, the next video that I'll be sharing with you guys in a couple weeks would be how to do a cylinder leak down test. So in this series, we're gonna show you guys how to do a compression test, how to do a leak down test, and also how to do engine vacuum. Go ahead and grab your tools, guys. Let's get ready, let's hit it. All right guys, so always make sure that whenever you guys are working on a car, wear gloves. Um, when I started in the industry, if you wore gloves, you were kind of laughed at, but now wear them. You gotta remember that some of the stuff we're dealing with is nasty stuff, okay? So make sure you guys are wearing gloves, protect your hands. You got two of them, you lose one, you're down to one, you lose that one, then you're asked out of luck. So make sure you guys don't lose your hands, wear some gloves, so this way you guys protect your hands when you guys are working on the car. All right, so one of the first steps we gotta do is we gotta remove our ignition coils. This car has four coils, one coil per cylinder. If your car doesn't have coils, you might have a distributor with spark plug wires. Same process, the only thing is you're not removing a coil, you're removing a spark plug wire. So here I'm gonna go ahead and remove our spark, our ignition coil. And yes, it is acceptable to use power tools for this, so not a problem. Get this coil out of the way. Most common spark plugs use a 5 8 socket. This socket is one of my favorites. This is a deep well socket, so it works very good for cylinders that are deep, just like this one here. So we'll go ahead and remove the spark plug, get that out of the way. Beautiful. Also too, keep in mind when you guys remove the spark plug, this is a good time for you guys to check it for its health. So what we're looking for is the electrode on this one's actually quite dark. Uh, we usually pay attention to see if there's any oil, fuel residue, or coolant residue on this tip. Another thing you also wanna pay attention to is the porcelain. If you start to see any black markings going up the porcelain, that's usually indication that spark is traveling alongside the porcelain to ground, and this spark plug would have to be replaced. One of the other things you guys always wanna pay attention to is which adapter you're gonna be using for your compression test. As you guys could tell, we have a longer spark plug, so we wanna make sure that we match it up and they're about the same length. This is very important because if you pull out a short spark plug and you use a long tip, this tip could enter the cylinder and damage the piston. So you guys wanna make sure you guys select the right adapter. Now we have the adapter, we'll go ahead and drop it in and just hand tighten it. Um, I know us technicians have a, a uh, heavy hand or sometimes we like to over tighten things. Don't do so because if you do that, you run the risk of your adapter breaking inside the head and then good luck getting it out. All right, so once that's on there, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our compression tester. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand you have, I would strongly recommend spending some good money on a good one. If you are gonna be a technician, you are a technician, make the investment, get a good tester. If you're just a DIYer or you're doing this on the weekend trying to find out what's wrong with your car, obviously not gonna go spend two, $300 on a good tester. So something in the $50, $60 range would definitely do the job, okay? Just keep that in mind. So we'll go ahead and set that up on the cylinder, all right? And now, the most important thing, we're gonna do the first test, which is known as a static test. So a static test is gonna be cranking the engine over with no fuel, so this way we can get a baseline reading of what the compression should be. So during a static test, you're normally gonna get a higher compression reading, which is absolutely normal. The reason being is since the engine's rotating at a slower RPM, we're going to be able to compress more air in that specific cylinder, giving us a higher reading. So that's absolutely normal. Here, we're only gonna do one cylinder, but in the shop, if you're gonna be doing multiple cylinders, it's always a good idea to get a notepad with you. Start writing down which cylinder it is, what the static reading was, what the running reading was, and what the snap reading was. Those are three tests we're gonna do today on cylinder number three on this vehicle. Make sure you guys document this, so this way you guys have that to go back to and reference to know if there's really a problem or not. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fuse for the fuel pump. This way we have no fuel going into the engine. You might be wondering why am I doing this? Keep in mind that while I'm cranking it, these injectors are gonna be spraying fuel. If I'm spraying fuel into the cylinder, I can wash the walls of the cylinder, causing damage to the engine and also causing fuel to go into the crankcase, which we don't want. So we'll pull the fuse for the fuel pump and then we'll go ahead and run this particular test. Let me go ahead and do that. 
So another thing you could do, I know I mentioned removing the fuse. Some vehicles have what's called clear flood mode. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the throttle all the way down, wide open, and when you go to crank it, it's gonna cut injector pulse. So this way there's no fuel. However, not every manufacturer does this. If your vehicle that you're testing does, you can run that method. If it doesn't, go ahead and pull the fuse or the relay for the fuel pump. So now we have everything set up. We're gonna go ahead and crank the vehicle. So one of the things that most technicians wanna pay attention to is the initial rush of compression. What that means is the moment that this engine starts to spin, we're gonna see a, a rise in compression indicating that the vehicle was able to compress. After that, we're gonna do an equal amount of revolutions or cranks. What I mean by that is, if the engine spins six times or six rotations, we have to do that with each individual cylinder. If we don't do that, what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna get the wrong reading. Then we might condemn an engine that might be good, or we might not condemn an engine that's actually bad. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and crank it. All right, so here we did five crank revolutions and our first inrush was somewhere around 60 to 70 PSI. And right now our needle ended up being at about 145 PSI. So this is telling us that this engine is producing 145 PSI of compression. So the engine was able to take in enough air and compress it to 145 PSI. So the next test we're gonna run is called a running compression test. So now that we have our static or our baseline, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start the engine. With the engine running, if the engine's running in good condition, we should have a 50% drop of compression with the engine running. You might be wondering why am I getting less compression with the engine on than with the engine off? Very simple answer the engine's gonna be spinning at a faster RPM. So now, instead of spinning at 100 to 150 RPM, we're actually spinning somewhere around the 700 RPM range. So this means that the engine's spinning faster, less time for air to come in, compress, and go out. So this is why we usually have a 50% drop, which is what we expect to see. The next step is to put the fuse back into its spot so we can get the vehicle running to do the running compression test. So let me go ahead and put that in, and we'll rerun the test. All right, so now that we have the engine running, notice how compression has gone excessively high. So always make sure once you get the car running, first thing you wanna do is burp it. So we'll go ahead and clear it, and then we're gonna wait for it to come back to normal. Okay, so at this point, we could see, I'll go ahead and clear it one more time. So at this point, with the engine running, we're getting about the same reading, if not a little bit more, than with the engine during a static compression. So this right here is a good indication that we're having a fault with cylinder number three on this particular engine. Since we were getting about 145 to 150, we should be about 75 PSI with the engine running. If you guys could tell, PSI is a lot higher than 75. So keep in mind a quick test to analyze this is to determine if compression keeps going up, what is that telling me? So look at it this way. If the engine can't push exhaust out, then this means this pressure is gonna keep going up. So this is an indication to us that cylinder three either has a valve issue on the exhaust side or a restriction on the exhaust. However, we've tested other cylinders on this particular engine and they don't show that fault. So this is an indication that this might be specific to cylinder number three on the exhaust side. The next test we would run is called a snap test. The snap test with the engine running, what we're gonna do is we're gonna snap the throttle. When we snap the throttle, we need to get at least 80% of the pressure that we're getting on a static reading. So our static reading was 145, so we need to get at least 80% of 145. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and burp it and then we're gonna do a quick snap test and we're gonna see what our reading is gonna be. So during the snap test, we were supposed to get anything above 116 PSI. On this one, we actually only got about 100. So that's an indication as well that this engine isn't breathing properly. So it looks like we might have valve train issues on both sides intake and exhaust. The only way we can know 100% is we need to do the next test. 
So the next video we're gonna, that you guys are gonna be able to see is going to be a cylinder leak down test. If any one of these three tests fails during the compression test, then that's when you know you need to do a leak down test. This is a follow-up test. What this test is gonna do is gonna show you exactly where the leak is at or loss of compression, and this way you know what you need to recommend to your customer. And that's it guys, running compression tests is not as difficult as we make it seem. When it does become difficult is if you need to run this test and those spark plugs are underneath an intake. Then at that point you're gonna have to remove intake and it gets a little messy at that point. But this is still a required test that you guys need to do to be able to tell your customer if you're a shop or a tech or if you're doing this on your own. So this way you know, is this a mechanical problem or do I need to go to fuel or ignition? So this is just a good test for you guys to determine mechanical integrity of the engine in which you are diagnosing. On the next video guys, part of this series, you guys are gonna learn how to do a leak down test. So if for some reason this vehicle fails any portion of the compression test, you move over to a leak down test. So this way now you can pinpoint where the problem's at. If this video was helpful to you guys, make sure that you guys go ahead and subscribe. This way you guys get a ding anytime we drop a new video. Also too, if this information was helpful, go ahead and put it in the comments so this way we know how we can better help you guys. Also too, if there's any questions on any portion of this test, make sure you guys put it in the comments and one of us here at MAT is gonna go ahead and reply to you guys to make sure we can help you guys solve that problem. As we always say in Master Automotive Training, we are here to better the automotive industry one technician at a time and that starts with you. I'll see you guys on the next one.